going on guys? Welcome back to another episode on In The Garage brought to you by us here at Engine Swap Supply. I'm your favorite Joe and today we're gonna be bringing you the video everybody has been asking for. We're talking about the cam install part three and the final part to get your cam install done. Now we were asking for a thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel but with everything going on everybody's stuck at home we decided hey why not release it a little bit early and give them something to watch. So, uh, a little bit of housekeeping before we get into this video. If you guys are looking for a cam kit, we do offer cam kits. Uh, our cam kits we offer are from Brian Tooley. Uh, they have the best, we believe to have the best cams available. And we also offer complete kits. And we're fixing to offer the most complete kit that includes assembly lube, oil, and just everything you'll need besides tools and a little bit of common sense to get a cam swap done on your engine. Now. If you guys are thinking about purchasing a drivetrain from us, we do offer this service as well. So if you're thinking about buying a drivetrain and you say, once I get it, I'm going to take it here to get a cam, we can do that here. So that way, by the time you get your drivetrain, it's already done. So guys, without further ado, grab your favorite drink and let's get into this video. All right, guys. And just a little recap. In part one, we show you guys how to take the motor down to a short block. And then in part two, we show you how to install the valve springs onto the cylinder heads and then how to install the cam phaser limiter into the cam phaser. Now at this time there is a cam phaser lockout available and they're both similar. The instructions to install them are the same but the cam phaser lockout completely locks out the VVT. So if you go back and watch part two, the, the phaser limiter has some movement in the phaser chamber there while the limiter completely locks that out. There's no movement. So this is different from a VVT delete kit. A VVT delete kit is a whole nother added expense. So for 90% of you guys, the lockout is the perfect option. It, get, it take, locks out the VVT and you don't have to go and buy another timing cover and you know another cam gear and it requires custom cam and etc etc. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this video. We're gonna start out by cleaning off the RTV on the surfaces and then go from there. All right guys, so what I'd like to do first is I'd like to flip it around and start taking the RTV off the oil pan uh, mating surface. Uh, you know, as we said in the previous videos, GM doesn't use gaskets, they use a, a RTV. So they are, use RTV on the oil pan and the timing cover. So I like to actually just take this off first and uh, you can get you a gasket scraper you can find this at your auto parts store or you can just use a razor blade just be really careful. Um, basically, it comes off pretty easily too. Um, just be sure not to drop it into the motor, but if you did it wouldn't be too bad to get it up considering everything's off. So at this point you could, you would be pretty much ready to go. Um, you could actually leave it like this, but I like to take a green scotch bright and just kind of scuff it up some more. Just being careful not to send it into the Guys, and, that, and, and that's it. Uh, it's pretty much ready to uh, have RTV put back on it and then set back on. And you're going to want to do the same thing to the oil pan. You're going to want to clean all the R excess RTV on it and get it ready to be put on. But now we're going to go ahead and do the front timing cover, the front timing cover area as well. All right, guys. So now we're going to get all the um, RTV off the timing cover, or at least all the thick part here. And uh, just work around the oil pump alignment tools for now. And then when you take them off, you can come back and, and finish cleaning those off. And then again, I like to come, come by with the green scotch bright. Just kind of clean it up a little bit more. All right, so now that we're here, the first thing I like to do is actually blow these holes out. Uh, they have, you know, they're going to have the, the, uh, thread, the thread sealer and stuff like that on them. So I like the, and then they'll have water from when they turn and stuff. So I'll, we'll just blow these out. And now we're going to go ahead and start uh, cleaning the threads out for the for the head bolts. Now ARP does sell like a thread chaser. Uh, these are M12 by 1.75. They sell a thread chaser, which we do use, but if you don't want to go out and uh, get one of these, or maybe you're in the middle of your camp swap and you need to kind of get it done, 
you can always take one of the one of the head bolts and just cut two grooves across from each other and it'll get a bunch of the stuff out as well. So as you can see, the bolt did get a bunch of the stuff in the thread. So if you guys don't have an ARP chaser, uh, you can definitely use one of these. Cam, take it out of the pack, take it out of the bag. Don't have to drop it. As... <laughs> All right, guys, so you're gonna want to do a quick check on your cam here make sure it doesn't have any like burrs or any like big debris or sometimes they're dusty and you'll you want to wipe them down with some wd-40 or something um, but once you see it's okay uh, you want to get ready to install it you're going to want to grab some assembly lube here and be very gracious with it just uh, lather it up you can never put too much of this slowly and carefully now take your time, don't rush it, it's not a race. Um, I know a lot of guys say they'll get cam swaps done in like 30 minutes, but uh, you know, I'd rather take my time with this stuff. I'm gonna start putting it in. All right guys, so once I got it on the second journal, I like to grab the, the original cam bolt and put it in a few threads because you're gonna need it to leverage it. And then we can start again. Just carefully putting it in. Don't rush it, don't force it either. It should almost, uh, you know, it's like putting a puzzle piece together. And you're gonna wanna take some more of this and just put it. Seems excessive, but like I said, you can never use too much of this stuff. That's it. So you're gonna to wanna to put this, uh, you're gonna to wanna to do dot to dot, like we said in the first video. Um, and dot to dot usually means this little cam, you see this little extrusion here, this little pin, it typically is around three o'clock. So that kinda of help you out a little bit. And then you can take your cam bolt out. We're gonna go ahead and put the cam plate on. Now you're gonna to wanna to undo these Put your cam plate back on. I like to put one in here. All right guys, you're gonna wanna put some blue Loctite on these. Uh, a little bit goes a long way. You're gonna wanna snug these up. Alright guys, these are about 11 to 16 foot pounds. Um, so really if you guys just want to give it a nice little quarter turn or so. Alright, that's it guys, you got the cam plate on. Uh, next up is putting the chain and the phaser. So next up we're gonna wanna install the cam phaser back onto the onto the cam, the phaser and the chain. And what you're gonna wanna do is, I don't know if you can see. All right, so there's a small little arrow right here on the phaser. You're gonna wanna line that up with the dot on the cam sprocket. Um, that's what they call lining dot to dot. So this, the arrow, the arrow will be pointing down and the cam dot, the, the crank sprocket dot will be pointing up. So that's, and that's how you line these two up. So let's go ahead and get these installed. All right guys, so what I like to do is, you see this, this is spring tension right here. You can leave it on here, um, but it does make it a little bit harder to get the chain on. So what I like to do is I like to do some channel locks 
And be careful when doing this, these do, these can break. They're inexpensive, but um, you know, that's one less thing you wanna go have to go out and buy. And you just put a little bit of pressure on there. This thing, I don't know if you can see, has a little hole right here that'll line up with this hole on the actual uh, bracket itself. And once it's lined up, uh, the best thing to use is a paper clip, what I found, but this is what I have right now. So, next thing is, I like to take the cam sprocket, and I like to pull the cam all the way out, as far out as it'll go. And do you remember when I said three o'clock was uh, pretty much dot to dot? So now I'm just checking it uh, before I even put it on with the chain or anything. It's much easier to do it this way, just to double check. Put in a little bit. Come back here and check on your cam, make sure it's spinning. And sure enough, so we got it there on the, we got it lined up. Now I'll line it up again here, dot to dot, as best as I can. There you go, that's dot to dot. So then I'll pull the bolt back off. Pull the phaser and the bolt. Be careful not to spin it anymore. And I like to pull the cam sprocket out and then line it up out here first. And because that way you get it as close as possible. There you go, they're lined up. And then I'll just bring it in slowly. And it's okay if you don't get it on the first try. Sometimes we don't, I mean, a lot of times we don't. If I get it right now, it'd be pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Lined up, no, I didn't, see, I moved it, so. So now we'll take it back out. So it's lined up there. All right, there you go. And we'll push this back. And then we'll get the cam bolt. And we'll try to start to thread the thread it in. Oh, I think I got it. I felt it lay in the cam sprocket. And, yep, that to that. Just to, just to be sure, you can shake it. You see how it's not really moving? Now, if it wasn't on the cam, and the, and the little uh, tab on the cam, you'd have a little bit more play and it'd feel sloppy, but this is, I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit. So I'm gonna spin it a few times and make sure it's okay. And the cam is moving. I'm gonna make sure the cam is moving, I'm gonna make sure it's smooth still. Now you can, I'll take this off here. You can even grab the chain and just, like I said, you're just pushing this in a little bit to grab your, and let it go. And that's it, you successfully lined up your cam. The only thing we have to do is replace the bolt with the new bolt. All right guys, so you're gonna take your old bolt out. And I guess you could do this with your new bolt. If you want to see it, I like to use the old bolt just in case anything happens. And you always wanna use a new bolt. Our cam, all our cam kits come with a new bolt. And you're gonna to wanna to just put this one in and just tighten down a bit. Now this bolt is 48 foot pounds and 90 degrees. We have a snap-on torque wrench that does, that does the degree and the foot pounds. So it's much easier for us to do it. But if you don't, have this fancy torque wrench, you can always go get your a torque wrench from uh, O'Reilly's or AutoZone or parts store to rent one. And you can always just draw a line with a Sharpie straight up and then you can watch it turn as you turn it to 90 degrees. So, sorry, which isn't much. There you go. Okay, so next up is gonna be the lifters. You're gonna wanna take these little 10 millimeters up for the lifter trays that we put back in. You can just set it in there. As always, brand new pack lifter trays. I'm gonna open these up. Okay, then you're gonna take your lifter and just see the lifters have uh, flats on two sides and so do the trays, so that's how they go in. Doesn't matter which 
side, but that's just how they go in like that. Do one lifter at a time. And remember, we've been soaking these in oil for at least an, at least an hour, uh, but really you want to soak them overnight. Uh, ideally, you want to soak them for 24 hours, but with the assembly lube and everything, they'll be okay. So you can see the block has these uh, tabs for the lifter trays and the lifter trays have them as well. So that's how you're gonna wanna put them in. And they won't just slide in. Um, you do have to maybe jiggle them a little bit, but they'll, they'll fall in there. There you go. I'd like to take my bolt, put it in. And just kind of play with it to get in there. All right, guys, and now that you have your lifters and lifter trays in, you're gonna to wanna to tighten these bolts down. Now they are just little 10 millimeters. I believe they're like 22 foot pounds. So don't go crazy with them. Snug them down. Like I said, nothing too crazy. Pretty small bolts. Once you do this side, go ahead and do the other side. Now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to put your uh, the fuel pump lifter uh, back Back in here, now that we did all the lifters, I like to just do this one. This one has a little hole on the side. Typically, this will go to towards the passenger side. I don't really think it matters, but that's how it came out, and that's how we put them back in. So uh, we're just gonna slide this guy back in here. And this is just a little 13 millimeter. And we're just gonna tighten it up here. It's also just 22 foot pounds. So just a quick snug, it'll be there. So, okay, so the next step is really important. We have the oil, the DOD oil block off plugs. And what basically we're just gonna plug, we're just gonna plug off all these little holes right here. So this is where the oil would shoot up through the valley. And then that would kind of enable your DOD, uh, your DOD mechanically. So it will not be able to go into four cylinder mode. It can't because of the lifters, but now it really can't because of these. And if you don't block these off, what happens is oil is con constantly running through over here and it'll actually wear out your oil pump a lot faster to the point where you'll see uh, lower and lower oil pressure over time. It won't happen right away. You're gonna take your plug. I usually like to go from front to back, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna show you on the closest one to you guys. Uh, you're gonna set it, switch hands here. You're just gonna set it in the hole and push it in and then you're just gonna tap it, tap it in with the hammer. And you should feel a difference and you will you should have heard a difference. Uh, so uh, that tells you when to stop. They do have a very gradual lip to where they won't go down anymore. So you can't push them all the way through and they won't fall in. All right guys, and that's all you need to do to block off the DOD. Now at this point, I like to clean off the surface here uh, from all the oil that we, that, we, that we dropped with the lifters. And that way, just to ensure what you're doing is, is, is pretty clean at all times. Next thing you wanna make sure is you wanna make sure you have the dowel pins on each top corner of the block. Uh, if, you, if you don't have them on the block, check your cylinder heads. And if they're on, in the cylinder heads, take them out and put them in, uh, put them in the block. This is, this is what helps keep the head in place, what helps keep it lined up. Uh, there's a bunch of horror stories out there about uh, threading or uh, stripping the threads on the on the block because they didn't align it properly. And like everything else, brand new head gaskets from GM. Uh, this is actually the first time I've got them like this, but they are brand new gaskets from General Motors. All right, guys, now these are the gaskets out of the packaging. These are brand new LT1 gaskets, uh, depending on the cam and what your goal is. If we either use LT1, LT4, or if you have L83, we use L83 gaskets. But these are, uh, they say 6.2 liter right here. And then very important, it says front. I don't know if you guys can see that. It says front right there. So this is how you're supposed to put the gasket. Front, front, and the front goes on top. You don't want to put them like this. You don't want to put them like that. They go like this. That's how they go. So now that you got your gasket set in there, 
do the other. I already put one on the other side. Now we'll go ahead and set the heads on. These are the cylinder heads, the porting, the ported cylinder heads that we offer. I'll get you a closer look at them. Um, now there's no real like left or right here, but what we do do is from the factory, uh, these have a, you, uh, it's a little out of focus, but you can see from the factory, the sticker is on the, uh, the back driver's side. So that's how we like to put them back on. And you just want to line up, line them up with the dowel pins and they'll stay on pretty much. So, so now what I like to do is I like to grab one of, the, one of your original bolts and just kind of give it a few threads in there. Uh, because of the dowel pins, they shouldn't go anywhere, but it, just as a precaution. All right, guys, like I said before, we're going to be using the ARP head studs on this particular engine. Uh, so basically, you know, brand new box with it comes with the lube and then it comes with your instructions and then it comes with the stick. Uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and show you how we would how we install these. And it's not how we install them. It's how you're supposed to install them because they do come with instructions. So uh, I'll, I'll probably post a picture of the instructions on here. And if you guys are doing head bolts, uh, our kits usually come with head bolts, like we said before. So we'll post we'll post those instructions up. Now we're gonna start putting all the studs into the into the block. Uh, you're gonna hand tighten these. You don't want any torque. You can grab you a little Allen head or a little Allen head uh, wrench if you want, uh, but you're not gonna put any torque. You're not gonna use a ratchet or anything like that. Um, now before you do that, you remember the the uh, the Allen head bolt we took off on the driver's side corner, this one right here. So they, this one's a lot shorter than all the other bolts and they even include a shorter stud. So, and if you got ARP bolts, you'll have a shorter bolt as well. And see, here's the normal stud. So make sure you don't mix that up. And if you wanna be sure, you can see how far it goes in there and then you can see how far it goes in everywhere else. So this is where this one's supposed to be. You're just gonna to wanna to put that one in first. That way you don't put it anywhere else. All right, guys, and what I like to do is I like to just, uh, I like to tighten them with just a ratchet and an Allen head. And if you have a Allen key or something like that, or with a T handle, that'll work too. But I just like to, I'm literally using no force. I'm just turning it. And I'm just going to keep going. There might be a little bit of resistance. That's fine. Totally normal. But you're just going to go up until it stops. Right there, it stopped there. See, now I have to put some torque on it. That's where I stop. All right guys, now you may have noticed that I didn't put the gasket on here first. I just wanted, I did that because I wanted to show you guys that you can actually put them on afterwards if you wanted to. So like I said, it doesn't really like, it's not the biggest deal. Uh, I usually just like to put them on first, just out of habit. Uh, but you can put them on afterwards and still be okay. So now that our gaskets are on, our head bolt, our uh, head studs are in, the actual studs are in, now we're going to put the heads on. That's it. It was that simple. Just try and get it lined up as best you can for the stud and they'll sit in place. Now that we have the heads on, the next step is you're gonna to wanna to take the, the washers that give you to come in a bag, and then you're gonna to wanna to wipe them down and make sure they're clean and dry. And you wanna do them to all the washers. All right guys, so I cleaned off all the washers. Uh, so now that they're dry, uh, you also wanna make sure like this, these areas right here where the washers sit are dry inside the head as well. Um, just make sure they're clean. I mean, don't have puddles of oil sitting there or anything like that. And then you're just gonna to wanna to take the washer and both sides are the same. So you're just gonna to wanna to take the washer and just set them in there, set them on the stud. All 
Okay, so now you're gonna wanna take the ARP lubricant and you're gonna wanna lube the threads. All right, you just need a, a little bit on the threads here. And, and, uh, and then you're also gonna wanna do the bottom of the bolt. But we'll get to that as soon as we do these threads here. Then you're gonna take the bolt here and you're gonna put lube, you're gonna lubricate the bottom of the bolt. And just put some on the bottom there. And then just give it a few threads. You can come back and grab those. So you can, if your fingers are small enough, I guess you could just grab them like this and lead it in there and then just give it a couple twists using the tip of your finger seemed to work all right guys so what i like to do is i like to torque everything down to like 22 24 foot pounds uh before i start doing like the arp torque sequence or what they what they recommend that way i know everything at the same level so the torque sequence is one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten um, and we're gonna do these to I'll, I'll do 22 and then uh, we'll do the rest from there okay so now everything's at uh, 22 foot pounds so now we have an even base of, of where everything's at so now I have instructions and these are the instructions uh, ARP gives you uh, by the way I'm using a 12.14 uh, millimeter socket and uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna rent a torque wrench definitely get a half inch um, so and like I said these, this is a torque sequence obviously the front and it's like I said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, ARP says to do uh, 40, 40, 80, and then 115. So, the sequence is the same for the, uh, the bolts. So, I'm gonna go ahead and torque all these down to 40, and then I'm gonna do again to 80, and then 115. Alright, that was 80, now we're going to do 115, and now you can see why I uh, said to get a half inch torque wrench. That's not too bad with this one. 3 is a little bit of a pain. And that's it guys, uh, 150 foot pounds. You can see how much the stand was moving, so it's... It's, uh, it's a lot of help if you have somebody, anybody, just hold in the front. Uh, or you can put a wheel check underneath it. I guess I could have done that, but uh, 150 foot pounds of sequence. Again, get you a half inch uh, that torque wrench. But uh, I'm gonna do the other side. All right guys, so next up is the valve train. We're gonna go ahead and install the push rods. Now, uh, we are using Brian Tooley push rods, uh, Brian Tooley parts again. So what I do is I actually take them out and I grab them all. I'll grab them all and I'll take my assembly lube and just get the whole top here. And we got some. And you're just gonna put them in one by one. Okay, once that's done, I actually like to just push them down. I 
actually like to put some on the top of the, the shard as well. And right before I put the rockers on, I'll dab some on the spring top here as well. All right, so next you're gonna take your uh, your rockers and you're just gonna set them back on, get them lined up pretty well, and you start these by hand. All right, now that you got them all there, all started by hand, I like to come up here and just slowly take it with the impact, just until it stops. You wanna try and keep them aligned and you wanna try and keep them there as best you can. So we'll go through here. All right guys, so once you got them all hand, uh, tightened down, you're gonna go ahead and take all of them to 22 foot pounds. Mine's at the 18, there you go. You want to take them down to 20 or torque them to 22 foot pounds. Don't worry about the uh, spring compression and stuff like that. Just try and keep them straight and get them to 22 foot pounds. Okay, now what I like what I like to do is, uh, do you see how some have tension here and, and uh, this one for instance is loose like this? You can kind of see it moving. Once you got all 16, I like to go ahead and look, find all the loose ones and torque them down to uh, 25 foot pounds and then I'll rotate, I'll rotate the crank and then these without tension will become loose and then I'll torque these to 22 foot pounds. So you make sure there's no tension on them then you torque them down to 25 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then I'm gonna to torque these down. Now it's time to put the oil pump back on. Now when you take your bolts off, be sure and uh, look for uh, who's got a little rubber sleeve and match it up to the oil pump. That way you're not double stacking them and you won't get a good seal. Before I put the oil pump on, what I like to do is I like to grab uh, a bunch of uh, assembly lube and just pour it in here. Uh, it seems excessive, but I mean, I've always done it this way and it, and it hasn't really, it hasn't failed me yet. So I like to sit here and I'll sit here and spin it until I basically see it come out. Uh, all right guys, so I spun it enough and you can see it's starting to leak out here with the rest of the oil that was in there. So now I, now I know that it's made its way through. So now this can be a little tricky, uh, getting this thing lined up correctly with the oil pump tools. So. Uh, do your best to kind of match up the gears with the sprocket. So this kind of is how it should go. If I get it on this try, that would be awesome, but I can never get them on the first try. Oh, well, make sure you take your bolt out. Okay, so like I was saying, you want to line these teeth up with the, with the timing sprocket or the crank sprocket as best you can. Like I said, if I get this on the first try, that'd be awesome, but I doubt it. It never happens. And there you go guys, it's back in and aligned. Uh, it actually took me a little bit, like I said, I never I never get I never get that lined up on the first time. Um, but now what I'm gonna do is this one doesn't have the little sleeve. So that one goes there, this one goes here. And again, these are like 22 foot pounds, so literally nothing. Um, just snug them down. Like I said guys, this seems unnecessary. But uh, trust me when I tell you, we've seen a bunch of people uh, say that they've lost oil pressure after doing a cam swap, and it's all because of uh, oil pump misalignment. Now, if you get a new oil pump, you don't have to use the tools. I'm not sure why. I guess maybe they wear themselves in somehow. But for 60 bucks, uh, you can't beat just the insurance. Um, you know, you're gonna risk you're gonna risk losing a motor or having to tear your motor back apart over sixty dollars. Again, you should 
you should probably not be doing a cam swap. All right, so now that the oil pump alignment tools are off, you can go in and clean this area off. Uh, just be careful about where the RTV goes. Um, you should be able to get it off. Uh, it should be, it should just fall straight down because we haven't put the oil pan on or anything, so. Just take a quick look in there after you're done, make sure there's no giant pieces. And there you go guys, I'm just going to hit this with that green scotch plate a little bit and get this little, little excess off. But if you wanted to, you would be pretty much ready to put your timing cover back. Guys, now that you have all the valve train on, all the rockers tied down, you want to just, uh, the whole reason I haven't, we haven't sealed the top up or anything is because I like to spin it. You want to give it a few turns and then just make sure you don't have any binding. And everything is going pretty smooth. Okay, so as you're, as you're spinning it real quick, this is the uh, mechanical fuel pump lifter. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put your finger here and you're gonna feel it move up and down. And now it's going down and you can actually see from this little, the little top here as well. But I like to keep my finger on it in case my eyes are trying to trick me. And there it is, that's on the down. So now when you go to put the mechanical fuel pump back on, you won't be uh, risking popping these threads out. So now that's done. Now that we checked everything, make sure it's work, it works and nothing's binding. Let's go ahead and clean off the timing cover and then the oil pan. And then we can put RTV on those and get those bolted on. All right guys, so the next thing you wanna do is uh, prep your timing cover. Um, and usually they're not too bad, like uh, all the, uh, all the uh, like really big RTV stuff stays on the motor. But you can kind of just take a razor blade and just kind of go over it a little bit. Get some of the larger RTV here. And then just like before, I'm gonna take a green scotch bright and just clean off the surface a little bit more. All right, guys. So once you got that all cleaned out, uh, just give it a quick uh, just blow with the with the air hose. Make sure there's nothing in there, and then that's pretty much it for this. All right, guys. Next up is the oil pan. Now the oil pan. A lot of the RTV gets stuck right here on this little ledge right here, um, and you can actually just kind of pick at it. Actually, if I didn't have gloves on. I'd be able to. And you can uh, and you can see I actually just peeled it off really quick one day a lot of it um, and that's pretty much all you do want to kind of go over the surface a little bit but pretty much I want to clean up all the RTV and then I took a green scotch bright to the surface again uh, just to clean it up and then once you do that you want to you want to grab like a towel or a shop towel or whatever and just make sure there's no oil and then uh, just clean it off as best you can and then now the oil pan is ready to go on. But we're gonna go ahead and do the RTV on the timing cover and then we're gonna put that on first and then you put the oil, oil pan on. So let's go ahead and do the timing cover real quick. Now that we have the timing cover and the oil pan cleaned up, you're gonna wanna run, uh, grab the, your RTV. The cam kit we offer does include the AC Delco RTV and this is enough to do both the oil pan and the timing cover. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna lay about an eight, eighth inch bead uh, just all along the timing cover on the inside, insides of the bolts obviously. Um, and what I like to do is I pretty much like to go for this line here and I just kind of lay it right on the line and it just, it seems, you obviously want to get it on, on the flat surface as well. That's why if you lay it on the line, it'll kind of be on both sides and I just like to follow it. So here we go. Alright guys, real quick, the timing cover also has these little rubber sleeves. Um, you know, just pay attention, make sure the rubber sleeves go with the in the holes that don't have any. And some of the bolts, if you get them without rubber sleeves, make sure you put them in with the that have rubber sleeves in the timing cover. And the timing cover also has these little tabs that line up here and here. So these two here. And that's kind of what you're shooting for. But I like to grab a bolt to guide me. It doesn't really matter where I put them. Bolt. Because I just need to get in 
pretty close area. Then we'll get the right on there. There you go. Now we'll start with this bolt. I'll just grab another one somewhat in the opposite direction. All right, guys, so now that you have the timing cover inserted and if we have the dowel pins lined up, it shouldn't fall out, but I do like to hand tighten the bolts uh, just a little bit so it doesn't pop out. And then now we can start putting these guys back in one by one. Again, make sure if your bolt has a little rubber collar, make sure it goes into a hole that doesn't have a rubber. Okay, now that we have all the uh, timing cover bolts back on, you're gonna wanna torque them down to 22 foot pounds in a star pattern. So whichever side you wanna start with. Just go down and come up here. All right, guys. So once that's once that's done, you're gonna want to plug in your oil pump back in and just pin the uh, pin this guy back. All right, guys. And just like the timing cover, you're gonna want to lay a, a eighth inch bead uh, along this line. And then right where it meets the front timing cover, you're gonna wanna add just a, you're gonna wanna add a little bit more, and you're gonna wanna add a little bit more back here as well, where it meets with the rear timing cover. Now you wanna make sure you have your oil, your oil pump seal here and your two O-rings here for your oil cooler. So you, once you make sure you have those and you make sure everything's clean, you can give it one more wipe down. We're gonna go ahead and add the RTV. All right guys, so it looks like I went on just a bit too heavy because I didn't quite make it. Uh, so next, maybe don't cut as low as I did, maybe cut a little bit further, maybe move or just air faster. Uh, but like I said, we have this stuff here, so it's not too bad. And we'll just keep going. We'll just finish this little bit out. Usually we have some left over, but man, so, so just, yeah, you might want to cut it down a little bit. A little bit uh, shorter than I did. So now that we have the RTV on, we're gonna put the oil pump on. Now the bolts, make sure, again, check for the collars, make sure, see who does and who doesn't have a plastic collar, that way you're not doubling up. Now, I actually like to put the oil pan on from the bottom. Reason being is when you flip it over, all the oil comes out and it, and it, it just gets everywhere. So I like to go from the top or from the bottom up and that way you don't have things spilling everywhere and the RTV can actually set how it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and put this oil pan. All right guys, so if you have friends, unlike myself, it makes it a lot easier to have two people or one person on each side and kind of lifting it up and, and kind of getting it lined up. Now there are dowels on the block or on the oil pan, just like the timing cover. So that's kind of where you want to aim for. But again, I like these bolts. So that way um, I, I kind of get a really good idea of where we're lining up and I'll, I'll use two, one on each side keep the pan and then I'll start and then I'll start putting the rest on. So let's see if I can do this without messing it up. All right guys, that's pretty much how I get the oil pan on. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is you wanna clean the surface of the block too. I had a, I had a little bit of oil right here, uh, seep out just a little bit. It shouldn't affect anything, but it's always best to, uh, to just take your time on stuff like this and just double check. But that's why, that's why we do it here, so you guys can learn from our mistakes and what we deal with. All right guys, this is the home stretch. Next up, we're just gonna put the valley cover back on real quick. And just make sure your gasket's in place correctly on the valley cover and you can just set it down. Start hand tightening these. The Next up is the valve covers. Just gonna put them back on. Make sure your make sure your gasket's okay. Make sure your bolts are back in there. If you push them down, you can get a better. You can get them lined up right on the holes there. And then once you put a little bit of pressure, you can start 
start hand planting them in there. Make sure you get a few threads in by hand first. You don't want to strip these out, especially, especially right when you're almost done. Now you just go ahead and take these down. These are all 10 millimeters. They don't take much, guys. Okay, now just do the other side. Remember, the driver's side is the one that has the oil cap. Okay, almost done. Next up, we're gonna put the high pressure fuel system on. Now, if you remember, we did check to make sure that the fuel pump lifter was on the flat spot on the cam lobe. So now we can make sure that we're not gonna pull the threads out of, out of the block here. So next, we're just gonna put this on and make sure you have the gasket on here as well. If you took this off just like this and left it together, you should be fine. But, and if you decide you wanna remove this for your swap, you can, but we'll leave it on here just for now. So now we're just gonna set this in. Set this in there, and we're gonna start by hand threading these. So you can see even on the flat spot on the cam lobe, the fuel pump is still is still up, up there. Um, there's not a whole lot that can actually push it down. It's almost there, so, but you can imagine if it was on one of the actual lift points. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take these down a little bit at a time. Go side by side. Okay, so now you're gonna to wanna to install the fuel rail and injector assembly. Now remember the fuel rail pressure sensor goes on the driver's side. So this points to the back. And one thing you wanna look out for guys is make sure these seals are okay. If they're not okay, you're gonna to wanna to replace them. They're fairly cheap. Uh, but like I said, our motor are so low mileage that usually nine times out of 10, they look good. So let's go ahead and put these back in. Start by hand tightening them there. Now we're gonna do the other side. By the way, I don't, I don't, these are disconnected. You don't have to disconnect them. They do just come out as an assembly. But I'll plug them back in. This engine is getting one of our standalone harnesses. Uh, so what we do, this is actually a 2018. You can tell by the three pin, uh, the three pin sensor here. So we actually convert these to a four pin because it is cheaper and it's easier to run that operating software than running the 17 plus. So that's what we do. So I'm gonna leave these unplugged because I'm gonna swap out this harness. Take our impact, bring it down. All right guys, now the fuel rail bolts are also 18 foot pounds, so I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. Again, if you don't, just give them, just get them a little quarter turn, snug them down. I mean, 18 foot pounds isn't really a lot. But we have torque wrenches here, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, Torque them down. So now that the fuel rails are torqued down, we're gonna go ahead and install the lines. The lines are 22, 24 foot pounds as well. So we're just gonna get them lined up here. And get these back on. Start hand tightening these. And these are 17 millimeters, and then this is a 10 millimeter. And that's it. This cam install is now done. Don't be afraid to tackle this guys. It's not that bad. If you have some basic hand tools, a little bit of common sense, and you're able and willing to go rent a few tools to get this done, you can do this in your garage. As you can see, we tried to break it down as best we could to help you guys get through this. 
If you have any questions, you can always contact us, 866-59-SWAPS, or you can contact me directly at joe at engineswapsupply.com. And that's gonna do it for our cam and saw tutorial, guys. Part one, two, and three are all available online. You can check them out on our YouTube channel, or we're probably gonna mash them together and put one long video on our website. So be on the lookout for that. And don't forget, we do offer these cam kits. We offer just the cams, the cam springs and push rods, the cam with the DOD delete kit. And we're also gonna be offering the most complete cam kit, which will include the oil filter assembly loop and anything else we can think of to help you guys get this done in your garage. And one more thing, we get a lot of technical questions about cam installs and you guys just aren't buying them from us. We're always happy to help you guys out, but just keep in mind, it does take a lot of time and it takes a lot of resources to get these videos made and put out for you guys. So all I'm asking is the next time you're thinking about buying something, just keep us in mind. And for those of you that do buy from us, we really do appreciate it. It keeps us in business and it helps us bring more videos for everyone else to watch. With that being said, guys, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, and we'll catch you on the next one. Tackle your projects with confidence with Engine Swap Supply. Focusing on drivetrains, Engine Swap Supply sells engines, transmissions, performance parts, parts for resto mod swaps, and more. Everyone is quick to sell parts to the average enthusiast, but not many are putting out information to help with installations or general questions. Engine Swap Supply is partnered with the best in the business to help bring you quality parts and information to help you with your project. Visit EngineSwapSupply.com today. One more thing before you guys go. Don't forget we are offering our billet catch cans. They are on pre-order until the 30th. I'll have a link down in the description for them. And remember, we're also bringing all of our manufacturing or at least trying to bring as much manufacturing as we can back to the United States. We have the 60 to 87 Gen 5 swap headers. They're ready to be shipped out. It's about a seven to 10 day shipping period just because it's still in the early stages of getting everything moved over here and with everything going on it's kind of slowed down some stuff not to a halt but it's not moving as fast as it normally would be but we are working on uh, bringing the g body a body like the chevelle and second gen uh, f body headers we're working on those now and then the first gen the first gen f body headers and i'm trying to get the fox body header squeezed in there and hopefully with more parts being made here we'll be able to bring more jobs back or at least keep more jobs here and maybe just help out the economy just a little bit more so until then guys stay safe and uh, hopefully all this stuff blows over soon so we can go back to business as usual once again guys thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one